Welcome to the Holiness Today podcast. In this episode, I have a conversation with Global NMI Director Lola Bricky. She has served as Director of Nazarene Missions International for over 10 years, and in this conversation, shares of the unique role that NMI has in engaging and mobilizing the local church to support Nazarene missions. Lola, welcome to the the Holiness Today podcast. So happy to have you. We've already kind of partnered with you in a way by doing NMI Centrals on our podcast. We love your ministry. I grew up listening to the missionary stories. But to get us started, how did God call you into ministry? How did you find yourself in the role that you are in today? Oh, I'm happy to share the story. When I was in my 20s, I was working for a multinational corporation. And in those days, when the telephone rang, you didn't know who was the person calling. And so I answered the phone, and much to my surprise, it was my pastor. He had never, ever called me at work. And what he said was that the night before, the nominating committee had met, and I had been nominated to be NWMS president. That was our name before NMI. And I didn't even know what an NWMS president did. But his question was, would I accept the nomination? And you know how things kind of happen, like it feels like time stands still, but it's actually just split seconds of time. And in those, in that momentary pause, after he said that, the Lord brought me back to different places throughout my teen years and my college years where I had been in a Nazarene church service and the call had been, if God would call you to be a missionary, will you say yes? And I had gone to the altar and I said, yes, Lord, I'll go. But the Lord never, I never felt the Lord was calling me. And so I convinced myself that the Lord simply wanted me to be obedient. In those split seconds, the Lord reminded me of those altar experiences. And so then I said the most spiritual thing I could think of to say to my pastor. And that was, I'll pray about it, pastor. And so I went home and I told my husband about this wonderful opportunity that had come my way. And he asked the most profound question. And that was like, what does an NWMS president do? And I didn't know, but I assured him that not to worry. My church had a wonderful tradition of electing older and wiser individuals. And so I was confident that that would be the result of that election. And much to my surprise, I was elected. What I did not anticipate was during that initial term of service that a fire would be lit inside of me that still burns today. And that is for every person who lives in every place and speaks every language would know that Jesus loves them. And that fire is like the same fire that is in many of our local and district presidents around the world, a passion to make sure that everyone knows Jesus. And so, I said yes, and much to my surprise, I continued serving as an NWMS president and then was elected a district NMI president. Our name had changed at that time, and then have been afforded many opportunities throughout uh, my term as a district president to serve on the Global NMI Council and on various committees at the global level. And 10 years ago, much to my surprise, the phone rang again. And it was asking, would I accept the nomination of the Board of General Superintendents to be the the global director of NMI? And I remember that phone call. I remember my response to the Lord after that phone call. And it truly has been a joy to serve for the last 10 years. And actually, it has been a joy to serve in NMI for the last 40 years as either a local, a district, or as the global director. One of the wonderful things about NMI is that we do love missionaries, and NMI supports our our Nazarene missionaries. But one of the other wonderful things about NMI is that NMI gives a wonderful place of service for those who are called to stay and support Nazarene missions. And that's my story. And I am so grateful that our church has given me the opportunity to serve in this way and that has allowed me to use my God-given gifts and abilities to advance the kingdom. Really, NMI 
the front the frontline troops of NMI are those people in the local church that you can get involved at the local level and still be working a full-time job in another field. But your story until very recently, you didn't get into full-time work at the Global Ministry Center because you stayed in a different field. So how has your professional career helped out you as an NMI director? How have those kind of worked together or do you see that working together? I do see them working together. Just to be clear, NMI exists because the local church exists. I agree with what you're saying. We have an organization so that we are supporting those local churches. But if it weren't for the local churches, we don't exist. I definitely, I worked full time the whole time I was a local and a district NMI president. And I actually look back on my life and I see these different experiences and I see how the Lord wove the tapestry of my life for that. For example, I, you know, when I first graduated from college, I worked for a large corporation and I actually worked in IT. And those skills actually have helped me in ways I just am really surprised at looking back. But then I remember another time that the Lord opened the door for me to be a college instructor. And again, that need to get up in front of a classroom every day and keep their attention and to present information in a compelling way. And that was when I was a district and my president. And so I look at those life experiences and the definitely all of it then has come to where I am today. And I am so grateful for those life experiences. Again, like you said, almost all of our NMI presidents, they are all volunteers, but almost all of them have another vocation. And they do NMI because of this passion and this fire that is lit within them. The mission statement of NMI is engaging and mobilizing the local church to engage missions in the Church of the Nazarene. And you are the denominational representative of that engagement. Part of that is telling stories of the missionaries for the local church and hearing the stories. But how has NMI, over the years, seen ways in which they can tell and connect those stories to missionaries? Great question again, Nate. Thank you. We kind of say that what NMI is today is that we are the global missions advocate in every local church. And we nurture a spirit of missions and we mobilize into action, impacting people around the world. Those stories of impact we now are telling through a publication called NMI Central. NMI Central comes out every week on Wednesday, it is intentionally uh, structured so that because we're because most people read it on their phone or a mobile device. And so it's intentionally structured in a way that's easy to read on your mobile device has some statistics, has some basic information, and then intentionally has a short story of telling of how God is using the Church of the Nazarene around the world to change lives. At the end are, is a link of ways you can become involved. We are so excited over NMI Central because that is our primary means of telling the story. We are thrilled to be partnering with Holiness Today on sharing those through audio as well. And then also as part of NMI Central on the first Wednesday of each month is a section called Kids Kaleidoscope. And just to be clear, Kids Kaleidoscope is not a standalone publication. It actually goes along with the story that is in NMI Central and is a supplement to NMI Central of a way to get children involved. Because most of us, if we grew up in the church, we grew up hearing those stories and our hearts were forever changed by hearing the stories. And so we really want to give children an opportunity today to hear stories as well. And you may have said this, but NMI Central comes out in uh, weekly and it's in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and French. So it's really a global publication that you guys are pushing out from each region because it's it's not like you're highlighting one region where stories coming out of each region and highlighting that for the global church to read those in their language, in those four main languages. Yes. And actually the story that came out yesterday came from the state of Alaska in the United States. And it was a wonderful story of God's faithfulness in their giving to the World Evangelism Fund. And I unfortunately don't remember how many years they've given in a row, but it's it's significant. In fact, I think it's the, no other district has matched their faithfulness in giving to the World Evangelism Fund. So yes, we tell the story from six regions because that's where the Church of Nazarene is serving. You are celebrating the 75th 
anniversary of Alabaster giving this year? Is that is the 75th? Yeah, we just finished that. Yeah, just finished 75th. But just for our listeners, tell us a little bit about Alabaster giving. Well, I mentioned before that that NMI, we mobilize into action. We actually focus on five key areas of where we are focused. The first is prayer for the lost and Nazarene missionaries. The second one is we are actively engaged in engaging children and youth in missions. The third is that we provide care and connection to our Nazarene missionaries. We encourage giving to the World Evangelism Fund. And the last one is we encourage giving to Alabaster. Alabaster, as you said, just celebrated 75 years. Incredible. Elizabeth Venom uh, was a member of the global, NM, whatever our name was way back then. I started to say NMI, but it wasn't NMI, but she was coming home 75 years ago. She lived in Florida and she was coming home from a global council meeting in Kansas City and taking the train. And she had been asked to find a way to raise more funds because the church was growing because this was after the conclusion of World War II and there was a need for buildings. And so the Lord gave Elizabeth Venom this vision of alabaster. And it goes back to the woman in the New Testament who poured, broke the alabaster jar over Jesus. And, you know, it was a generous gift and it felt like it was a sacrificial gift and a wasteful gift by many who were observing it. But alabaster is the concept of we give, it used to in the early days, it was like, give your spirit change and things like that. And you put it in an alabaster container. Well, a lot has changed and a lot of people are like me and I kind of don't ever have spare change in my pocket. So what I do is I literally set aside a certain amount of money each month that I will give to Alabaster. And then when the Alabaster offering is received in my local church, that is what I give. But one thing that's important about Alabaster is 100% of the donations are, are go to Alabaster. There is no administrative cost taken out of your Alabaster donations. But let's be clear, Alabaster does have administrative costs Those costs are covered by the generosity of individuals to the World Evangelism Fund. But 100% of what we give to Alabaster goes to provide places where people worship, heal, and learn. And the Alabaster stories of transformed lives because of people's generosity now for 75 years is heartwarming and encouraging. All of the giving of Alabaster goes directly to building new churches, new actual church buildings. Yeah, places, we, we actually say it's where people worship, heal, and learn. So that is churches, that is parsonages, that is schools, that's clinics. Sometimes it's district centers, provide training, you know, for, for their district and so forth. But it basically falls under those key concepts of worship, heal, and learn. That's, that's what Alabaster does. Tell us a little about the emphasis that NMI has on praying for our missionaries. Yeah, prayer is the foundation of everything that NMI does. And I've often shared with missionaries, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, it doesn't matter what time zone you are in, but I assure you, missionary, that wherever you are, there is an NMI leader someplace in the world praying for you at that moment. And those aren't just empty words, those are real words, and they're words that have power, because it really is happening. Prayer is foundational, we pray for the lost, and we pray for our Nazarene missionaries. One very important way that we call the church to pray is through the Global Week of Prayer. In March, we'll be celebrating the 29th year of calling the church to prayer during this one week. It always is held on whatever week has the first Friday in March. So sometimes it's in Mar- it's the end of February and into March, but next year it's actually going to be March 2nd through March 8th. And the resources will be available in at least 15 languages. Normally, everything we provide is in the main languages of the church, but we are intentional during the Global Week of Prayer to provide resources in as many languages as possible in the heart languages of people. And so resources will be available. They'll be available on our website beginning January 6th. And there'll be resources for adults, and resources for children. Again, we are intentional on engaging children 
and youth and the concept of missions and the concept of praying for missionaries and the lost around the world. We begin the week with requests and praises for the global church, and then we move through the regions in a random order to pray for the world. Now, one thing that's very unique about our resources for this year is that next there's an item in each one of the praises that will have a special identifier or icon next to it. And those are items that were requests last year. And this year, the region submitted them as praises. The Lord heard the prayers of the global church and the Lord answered those prayers. And so we want to encourage people. Again, this isn't just an empty exercise that these prayers are being heard and they are moving the hand of God to reach our world. And I find in your NMI Central, that's maybe one of the biggest takeaways and challenges for me is you all, there's always at the end of that, the injunction to pray for certain needs of that specific area, which, you know, obviously we should always be praying for the global church, but in reading the NMI Central, it kind of puts a personality or a place behind it of what specifically we should be praying for. And the praise reports, I think are really nice to have on there. What do you find the biggest challenges in your role or, or what do you see as a growing challenge in your role as kind of the advocate for global missions in the last few years? Well, one of our biggest challenges is that the culture is shifting around us and NMI has been intentional. We just celebrated our 109th year. So we're officially 109 years old. And one of the things that we have always tried to do is to adapt to their current culture. When we were primarily based in just a few regions, it was a lot easier to adapt to the culture because there were fewer cultures to adapt to. Now, because we are in all six regions and trying to adapt NMI to be relevant in the current culture, that is one of our greatest needs at this time. And it's not that the message changes, the message still remains the same. The lost still need to know about Jesus, but the way that we convey that needs to adapt and be relevant in the world that we live in. You and I have talked about this in the past before. It's not so much just translating into language, but it's just to making sure that we're communicating, like you said, in all those specific cultural contexts. I mean, even in just, you know, the English or Spanish language alone, you have different subcultural contexts, but that just that warrants a whole difficulty in how we talk about the issues. And even not that missions needs to be rebranded, but even how we think about missionaries and the history of missionaries is, is interesting over time. Well, when I was, I have been blessed that I am a multi-generational Nazarene and my dad was a Nazarene pastor. So I was in church in those days, three times a week, because that's what we did. And in those days, I was blessed that there was a, a missionary family who was from the church that I grew up in. And I've talked about them many times when I've shared with any of my leaders, but they literally went off to the mission field for multiple years at a time. And that, had, you know, they said goodbye. And the only communication we had from them were those little, what were called airmail letters. They were on that very thin blue paper that you wrote on, and if you folded it right and sealed it up right, it became an envelope. And so you had to be really careful when you opened it that you didn't cut off part of the, the message the missionary had sent to you. That is a very different way of communicating than how missionaries communicate today. We are so blessed that missionaries are on social media, and we encourage our NMI leaders to become Facebook friends and on, you know follow them on Instagram and do find out what's really going on in their lives because it keeps you then current. You are actively praying for a current request, and you're also hearing how the Lord is blessing rather than waiting months and months for a missionary to have the time to sit down, compose a letter, you know, then mail it to you and you get it and distribute it to, to your church or to your district. But while that feels like a challenge, it actually has been a blessing to have that interaction. And so because of that, it allows our NMI leaders to really become part of the family of the missionary. And so they become very passionate uh, about their missionaries, uh, particularly if they're from their district or one that they've had as a Lynx missionary or one that has toured their district or whatever. And I think that that is a, well, it's a challenge. It's a blessing. And we are so fortunate that we live today and we can have that kind of communication. That's what we're learning too with Holiness Today is that 
we've recently learned that we need to get a WhatsApp community together, which that's new to me as well, but just ways in which we can share in these new global, you know, connectivity, how our members are getting information is just so different, you know, so it's a, it's a fascinating thing. Well, it is speaking of WhatsApp, um, in many of our regions around the world, the way that the regional NMI coordinator communicates with their district presidents is not through email. It is yeah. through WhatsApp or various other uh, ways of sending data. And so any communication, again, from our office, we often have like a, a PDF available that then could be sent through a, a text message or, or something like that, because email isn't the way many people communicate no. today. It's it's interesting. And then also just the, the other side of uh, all the legal ramifications now. I mean, our society is much more litigious and what you can actually say and not say and communication styles. So uh, that's always adds fun problems to it. But um, well, it, the thing, you're right that there does seem to be more legal issues today. But I, again, remember growing up and I was very blessed that my my parents were very mission minded. So we always had missionaries in our church. And I was very privileged to be sitting around the dining room table as many of the stories were shared. And many times, in many places, missionaries would say things at the dining room table and ask my parents to pray for them and then would say things like, I wasn't able to say this in the service because if that information got out, our work in that country would end or something would happen to our, our brethren who were there. And so, yes, it is a, a need today, and we do have to be very cautious, but the truth is it's been there for a long time. Our missionaries for many, for decades, have been cautious of what they've shared in the congregation, what they've put in notes, and to protect our believers in, around the world. You know, we, again, I don't think as Americans, we understand the lack of freedom that many of our brethren live with. And what they do to share the gospel is so encouraging. And it does challenge us to know, to ask the question, would I be willing to do that if that were me? Well, and I also just think in sharing information that way, that even in those medians, that they have to be careful what they share because they don't know if that could be, you know, get out in a text message or out and all that stuff. So it's it's just fascinating as we move into new media and different ways to communicate that the same old problems, like you were saying, that we have to be careful what we say has to be adapted. But that is something that I think we can easily take for granted in your role. But you have to be constantly thinking about, as you communicate globally, that the communication is keeping the missionaries safe and those world areas safe as you're doing it. Well, and that's really one of the questions that often does come into our office. People will say, well, I need to know this or I need to know that. And they feel that they actually have a right to know. And unfortunately, many times it's like, we'd love to share that with you but we don't have permission to share that with you. And when you sometimes are able to share, did, are you aware if we shared that in a global publication that's out on the internet for everyone to view what could happen to our brethren around the world? And it's just a matter of people understanding that it may be safe in their context, but it may not be safe in someone else's context. The time that it takes to make sure those stories are okay to be sent out. I mean, it's just nice... It's a headache that probably doesn't go notice sometimes, but just the work of doing all that. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. We all appreciate that. So help me understand this, because I, I should know Harold of Holiness history better than I do. But there was a relationship between NMI and Harold with the other sheep. Is that correct? So you guys would do the publication of the other sheep way back when, but telling the stories of the missions uh, with the Harold of Holiness. Is that is that my understanding that correctly? Well, Way back when, the, the publication was called The Other Sheep, and that was a standalone publication. It was standalone, okay. Got that, it. that people could subscribe to, uh, just as they subscribed to The Herald of Holiness, as it was called. Then The Other Sheep was renamed, reformatted into a magazine called World Mission Magazine. And again, it still had a subscription, and I can remember you know, promoting that at district conventions or the district presence, promoting that at conventions for local presence to, you know, get everyone in your local church to subscribe to World Mission Magazine. Then there came a time when we merged World Mission Magazine with the Herald of Holiness. And so the front half of the publication was the Herald of Holiness, 
and the back half of the publication was World Mission Magazine. Uh, and then over time, that stopped. And then NMI had a page in, I don't know, I don't remember exactly when Holiness Today changed their name, but. Yeah, uh, see, I should changed. know that too. So that's yeah. on me. I and, should know the exact dates right. on that. And so then basically that stopped because again, you know, for a lot of reasons that, that ended. And then, so now we tell the story through NMI Central, which again, as you said, is in multiple languages mm -hmm. and is free to everyone around the world. And one of our key concepts is making sure that every person receives it at the same time. There is not one demographic who is more important than another demographic around the world. Everyone receives it together at the same time on the same day. We are rapidly attempting to expand the languages that NMI Central is offered in, and we're hoping after the first of the year that we'll have some announcements about some additional languages in a way that people can subscribe even in more languages. And that is the goal, to continue to tell the story in as many languages as we possibly can support and maintain to ensure that everyone can hear the story of how God is moving through the Church of the Nazarene. We'll be right back with the rest of this episode. But did you know you can receive credit for listening to Holiness Today podcast? Holiness Today podcast episodes qualify for lifelong learning with the Church of the Nazarene. To register for Lifelong Learning, simply go to learning.nazarene.org. The Lifelong Learning Registry provides Nazarene ministers the opportunity to record and report their efforts to develop and maintain a pattern of lifelong learning to enhance the ministry to which God has called them. Every Nazarene minister is encouraged to engage in a variety of lifelong learning activities. The code for Holiness Today podcast is 64627 and will also be listed in the show notes. This code can be utilized for this episode and any previous episode you wish to listen to. Thank you for being a listener and sharing in the ministry of the Church of the Nazarene. Now back to the rest of your episode. So I just have to ask this question. Is there a cookbook that you guys put together internationally with, with, with recipes from around the world? Way back when, yes. We, we no longer produce that. But again, you have to remember what year that was. And that was before the internet. Yeah. And, and so I can remember as a local president being at my district NMI convention or NWMS convention. And basically, you know, the that's when the Nazarene Publishing House came and they were yeah. had the items for sale. And I remember purchasing that because, again, it was helpful in my local context as a local president, um, gave you recipes things that you maybe had never thought about, a way to enliven missionary services or to get your congregation to understand about a missionary that was coming maybe from a particular country and so forth. But again, that was all before the internet. Right. Now, those resources are available to people for free, and they can do it at their home rather than NMI producing and selling that publication. Well, we had talked about... because. At Holiness Today, we were thinking of what, what connects people, obviously, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit connects us all. But we were thinking, what do we do that is a connecting, you know, thing around the world? And we thought food. Of course, it's food, you know. We had talked about doing some sort of international cookbook. So maybe instead of reinventing the wheel, with your permission, we could highlight some recipes from that cookbook in Holiness Today. Because we're trying to kind of do some more. We even did a video of, of preparing food. But it's like we could do more of those kind of things. But, you know. Again, figuring out how to do new ways of, of, of stuff that we've always, you know, we always are going to enjoy food. But that's a really cool idea. So these are recipes oh. from around the world. Is, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, recipes from around the world. And actually, there's that's a neat. copy in the NMI office. I think I'll have to go look for it the next time I'm in the office. Make sure yeah. you get it. But yeah, we would love to partner with you on that. That would be a ton of fun. If there's a place that you could travel to right now at the snap of your finger, obviously, other than where you, I'm sure you love home, but... Where's one of the best places or, or, or most memorable places that you've traveled to? That's like asking a parent, you know, which child they love most. <laughs> I know. I'm putting, I'm putting you in hot water here. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. Every, You'll have to give us six regional places, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. To to but every place that I have visited, my heart has been warmed. And and the one thing that, that just continues to surprise me, and it shouldn't, but how familiar, it doesn't matter where I go in the world, when I'm with NMI people, it's like being with my best friends 
that I've known for decades, and we may be just meeting for the first time. There is a certain energy and passion that NMI leaders around the world share. And it's it's so much fun. That's honestly the best part of this job is being with the NMI leaders around the world. And it doesn't matter which country it is, what climate, it doesn't matter if it's cold or hot, wet or cold or wet or dry. It's just a fabulous opportunity to be, be together with NMI leaders. Absolutely. I, I feel like that even when we go to any global meeting, it's like you can just quickly connect together. Something about being Nazarenes, it's like, it feels like a large family reunion, I feel like. So I, I definitely, definitely get that. All right, let me ask it a different way then. What is the best meal you've had on the road? You have a memorable meal where you're like, whoa, that was amazing. <laughs> well, there were, I have, I have been served some incredible meals. And again, I am always so humbled that when I am in places that they view me as the guest of honor, and I feel like that I'm among royalty because I'm with them. And I am just always so humbled at the, the sacrifice that they do to pull a meal together when I'm there and the, the way that they, they will not eat themselves to make sure that I have had enough to eat. And that is just the most humbling experience uh, of just that they, they want to care for their guests. But again, it goes back to the whole concept of hospitality, that we Nazarenes are hospitable people, and we really want to welcome guests among us. What is your favorite movie, or what movie is, 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 do you enjoy watching uh, the what most, I guess? What movies? Sure. Yeah, what, what genre or, or favorite specific movie? For okay. me, I, I, I have so many movies that I could pick, so it's hard for me to answer that question. But uh... Well, I'm so old that... When I was growing up, the Church of Nazarene did not go to movies. And so I have a very limited movie repertoire because I did not grow up going to movies because that's just not what Nazarenes did in those days. But today, I really like movies that make me laugh. I mean, I, I want movies that cause me to kind of forget about whatever problem I'm dealing with and kind of for a few moments, you know, think about something else and it makes me laugh so that when the movie ends, I feel kind of warm and fuzzy all over and, and very happy. Comedies then. So what book have you read in your life? You're like, that book kind of changed me. Is there any books that you read at any point in your life and you thought, this is a book I recommend to other people to, to read because it's uh, thought provoking or changes your perspective, anything like that? Well, there are, again, I've looked a lot of years, so I've read a lot of books. The correct answer is the Bible. I'll put it that way. Yes, <laughs> of course. That, that, that goes, yeah. But one of the books, I remember being a, a young person and for the first time reading My Utmost for His Highest. And, and it was like, whoa. It just, and so now that's become one of my favorites. And one of those books, I don't read it every year, but many years, it has been my devotional book that I've read throughout the year. And it continues, I'm amazed at how it continues to speak and how the Lord uses that book, even today. Um, it was book written a long time ago. And still, you know, how really some things, life changes, but then some things haven't changed at all. And, you know, we still have the same struggles and the same concerns. But that is, without doubt, one of my favorite books. So what advice would you give to someone first starting out that feels a call to missions? Well, if someone has a call to missions, the very first thing I would encourage them to do is talk to their pastor, talk to their youth pastor, talk to their local NMI president, and let them know that you are pondering this, that you're wrestling with this. And then become involved. Ask how you can become involved. How can you help? And one of the best tests is if your church or your district is uh, sending a working witness team someplace, become a part of that. Working witness has just changed the lives of so many people, including my own. You come home transformed from a working witness trip. And so, you know, those are the kinds of tests that I would encourage someone to become involved in. How do you feel with another culture? Are you so out of your comfort zone that you just can't wait to get home and you refuse to eat the food, you refuse to engage with the individuals that you were there to serve, you know, kind of you find out how you can serve. And the local church is, is the best place 
to do that because they know who you are and they know your gifts and abilities. They know your family situation. And I know so many stories of where a local church knew about someone and they raised the funds to help someone maybe go to an Azarene college or participate in work and witness or something like that. As that individual was, you know, sensing and testing the call. Yeah. But those are the best ways to become involved. What is your hope? What are you praying for specifically in your ministry? But what is your hope for the Church of the Nazarene as you think about it over the next you know, five to 10 years? Um, what has God pressed on your heart to be praying for? And what can our listeners be praying with you, uh, praying for you about as well? Well, and as we said a moment ago, NMI is 109 years old, and that is a rich legacy. And we are so blessed with that legacy. And as I mentioned, for 40 years of my life, it's been a part of who I am. But we definitely need, NMI has always been interested in engaging children and youth in missions. In fact, again, if you look at our documents from over 100 years ago, from our earliest days, we have always been engaging children and youth in missions. We've always understood that they are not our future. They are our present, and they are actively involved with us today. But the need for NMI is that we will continue to raise up new generations of leaders and will continue to nurture that spirit of missions in children and youth so that the if the Lord tarries, the concept of sending missionaries and supporting missionaries will continue as to be a vibrant part of who we are as Nazarenes and who we are in NMI. Well, thank you, Lola. It was good to share this time with you. I, uh, a blessing, and we're hopeful that we'll have more collaborations in the future on, on our podcast and our magazine. It's my pleasure to chat with you today, Nate. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Holiness Today podcast. If you enjoyed this production and wish to hear more, visit holinesstoday.org slash podcast or find us on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts.